The signals we looked for were mortality rates at seven days and 30 days because we think that if a therapy for COVID can reduce mortality or is associated with lower rates of mortality, it's a much more important therapy than one that does not impact survival at all because I think most of us are really worried about are we going to live or die if we get COVID, right? It's, a, it's got a much higher mortality rate than influenza or other viral infections. So we're all worried about that. We saw that the use of plasma, give, given, given, giving patients plasma in the first uh, one to three days, especially on the first day, was associated with, with an observation that we saw much lower mortality compared to giving it beyond three days at day four or beyond, suggesting that if you're going to treat someone in the hospital with plasma, do it early. Don't do it late, do it early. The, the potential benefit of it is early. That there are probably better therapies and more powerful therapies you can give later that you should use. But plasma, if you're going to do it, give it early. And then we analyzed the plasma itself because we didn't uh, know if plasma had a lot of immune activity, a medium amount or a low amount. So we looked at a couple of markers of immune activity and the one that we've submitted for publication is total IgG or immunoglobulin. And it's sort of a marker of how much immune activity does the, does the plasma have? Does it have a lot of you know, antibodies to various uh, factors or not? And we found that the patients who got the highest levels we divided into tertiles essentially, you know, and looked at the lower, middle, and higher tertile. And the patients who were given the highest tertile of immune activity had substantially lower mortality than patients who were given plasma that had a low tertile of immune activity. That's a very important observation because it should drive now the ability to, to plan and conduct a randomized clinical trial where you can test uh, plasma against either an active agent or a placebo and you have some sense for whoa, how much it may help. We think that while the convalescent plasma study is not a randomized trial, the, the uh, delivery of plasma in a way was randomized. No one knew which patients were getting low immune titer, medium immune, and high immune titers. So of all that we did, that was probably the one element that came closest to a randomization. And that's why we think that the initial observation paper for outcome is really important. This study is likely the largest study ever conducted with convalescent plasma. Uh, it's, we've enrolled over 90,000 patients. We think roughly 85% of those will have received a transfusion eventually. Uh, it will give us better insights into safety, into um, the potential for efficacy. The signals that we see will likely be confirmed by the additional data and then a clinical trial will need to further you know, validate our own results.